So I wanted to tell you this story and I want it to be at least mostly a comedy. So I wasn't sure where I should start. I wasn't sure if I should start with my granny who had a weird relationship with the truth and memory and taxes. Or I thought maybe I could start with, I was walking in the city in Sydney in the CBD and I saw a lady adjusting the collar of her child and I looked twice because I can and I realised she wasn't adjusting his collar, she was choking him. Oh, you're right, that's a terrible place to start. <laughs> if anything, I'll close with that. I know, I know where I'll start. I know where I'll start. Where I will start... It's a little bit before it becomes a comedy, but it's a good place to start. It's a good place to set the scene. I will start in the wardrobe. So, it's a walk-in wardrobe, and it's in my parents' house. It's in my dad's house, and the wardrobe is a time machine. What happens is, I walk into the wardrobe, and I look at my mother's clothes, and I think, I should pack those up. And then I walk out of the wardrobe, and any amount of time can have passed. One hour, two hours, a whole afternoon just gone, one thought gone. And I never touch anything and I never do anything, except for about three months ago, which is about a year after she died, uh, I took something out of the wardrobe. And what I took out of the wardrobe was a book, just like this. And in the book was a picture of the house I grew up in. And I thought, oh. I have to talk about this on stage. <laughs> because the house I grew up in was a piece of shit. <laughs> like, you think that is a bad picture of a house. It is a very good picture of a very bad house. <laughs> It was this falling down sort of uh, like converted boarding house that belonged to my grandmother and we lived in the house uh, because I'm vaguely ethnic. <laughs> you know, there's a ladder, there's a rung on the ladder of ethnicity that is your granny would be offended if you didn't live in the house. That's, I'm that. My granny is Hungarian Jewish. Uh, that's my family history, Jewish on my father's side. Uh, Catholic on my mother's side. They met in the late 70s and early 80s. So, of course, I was born and brought up Buddhist. And that was the house I grew up in. You think of the things that a house should have. You know, floors you can walk on. <laughs> Ceilings that stay on the ceiling. A relative lack of wildlife. <laughs> this house had none of those things. It had none, like that our front room was essentially a moat in that it looked like a floor but was so badly termite ridden that we needed a plank to get across the floor into our house. Very good for security at night, you could just withdraw the plank. <laughs> Any robbers would be found in the morning the next day with their legs through the floor like cockroaches in a humane trap. <laughs> Speaking of cockroaches, they do not have cockroaches anywhere in the world like they have in Sydney, and they do not have cockroaches anywhere in Sydney the way they have in a Buddhist household. <laughs> do you know that scene at the beginning of The Lord of the Rings where the drumbeat begins in the mines of Moria and the orcs pour from the ceiling and like... <laughs> that was my kitchen at night. Do you understand how arrogant a cockroach becomes if it knows you're not going to kill it? <laughs> Just generational job security. It's there dragging your lunch away across the floor. You're like, oi, give that back. It's like, fuck you, Buddhist. Next time, bring chicken. <laughs> I can't. I'm vegetarian. <laughs> I heard a scream once when I was seven and I ran into the bathroom to find my brother standing in the bath covered in wet plaster with a skeleton at his feet. The water hammer in the pipes had been so bad that the ceiling had collapsed, this skeleton had come out. We were seven, we thought it was a human skeleton. It wasn't, it was a possum skeleton and some lamb chops, which <laughs> is less sinister but makes less sense. <laughs> you know, I can understand a lazy upstairs murderer. I don't know what happened in the crawl space between that possum and that lamb. What ancient rivalry, its origins lost in the mists of time played out there. And Seven is just young enough that things are still happening to you for the very first time. <laughs> Completely novel things. That, so we weren't sure if it was the disaster that it seemed to be or if it was just a coming of age thing. <laughs> You're like, you don't know, it's early puberty, the skeleton ceiling thing, I, am I next? <laughs> And the whole reason that the place was falling to pieces was because my granny was a terrible landlady. It was all right, she was a terrible landlady from both directions in that she never fixed anything, but she also never charged anyone any rent. <laughs> my granny was one of, those, one of those wonderful, warm, kind, considerate bigots. 
You know, she'd just say the most horrendous stuff all the time, but was the nicest person. She would say, I cannot stand to see a hungry animal. She was always picking up strays from the street. She was always breaking up fights in the street. It was so embarrassing. I remember once seeing her break up a fight between a guy who was about six foot four shouting at his girlfriend. She charged in, grabbed him by the collar and went, pick on somebody your own size. She was 100% certain she was his own size. <laughs> Uh, she was so wonderful and kind. What a perfect example of my granny. She just said the most awful things but was so kind. She, we lived down here and, and uh, down the road was a homeware shop owned by a gay couple. And it burned down in an accidental fire. And this is what my granny said word for word when she heard about the fire. She said, Oh no, those poor faggots. I will make them a lasagna. I was like, no, Granny, you're not allowed to say that. It's a really offensive word. It's a really upsetting word. You're not allowed to use that word. But the thing is, they really like the lasagna. 